Click on chapter 2. You understand that better, don't you? I thought so. 2 Corinthians channel 2. <laughs> That's why you got to talk nowadays. They don't know what you mean. Click on chapter 2 and scroll down to verse 4. <laughs> Can you understand me now? <laughs> Ain't that sad? That's pitiful, isn't it? That's pitiful. 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. And look what the great preacher, Apostle Paul, said to one of these churches. Good night. Look at this. Verse 4. It don't sound like he's a very happy pastor. For out of much affliction and anguish of heart, I wrote unto you with many tears. Not that you should be grieved, but that you might know the love which I have more abundantly unto you. Now, Paul literally really wasn't their pastor, but I, I just use that terminology. He began most of these churches on his missionary journeys. Ephesus, Colossae, Philippi, Corinth. That's why you name them Philippians, Ephesians, Colossians. The church at Ephesus would be Ephesians. The church at Corinth would be the Corinthians. And the great preacher wrote to them. And boy, he wasn't just, everything's great, wonderful, smile, God loves you. He was saying, man, I've got anguish of heart. I'm writing to you with tears. I'm bawling my eyes out when I think about you. That's what he said about this church. And I want to preach this morning on the subject, things that made the preacher cry. Some things that made the preacher cry. The great apostle Paul who said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. The great apostle Paul who said, God always causes us to triumph no matter what happens. We come out on top. Wrote to these people and said, I'm crying when I think about y'all. Now, if you know your Bible at all much, you know that the Corinthian church, pastor sitting over here, man over here is pastor of the church before, man there is pastor of the church before. They all know this. These other preachers uh, know this. The Corinthian church was the most backslid, carnal, worldly mind of all the other churches that Paul wrote to. Am I right, Pastor Bill? All right. Now think about it. They had more problems, uh, and you don't, of all the names you'd want to name your church, it would not be Corinth Baptist. You see them in about every town, somebody named church. Well, according to the Bible, you, that wouldn't want what you'd want your church to be named. That was the most carnal, fleshly, worldly, backslid church of all the ones that he wrote to. And they had problems. And I'm going to talk about these problems this morning. Some of these we probably have right here in our church. I hope, pray we can keep them down to a minimum. It would be great to get rid of them, but I'm not uh, naive enough to think that uh, because of people. The more people you got, the more problems you got. The only way you're going to get away from problems is get away from people. And then you got one of them with you, so you're still going to have problems. But if you got two, you got more problems. You got four, you got more problems. You get a, that's why you have to pass so many laws in big cities. The more people you've got, the more restrictions and stuff you've got to have. The smaller group you have, which I, I believe the Lord intended to stay that way to start with, I don't even God's in big cities, um, uh, you, you have more trouble and more problems. So with that as an introduction this, this morning, I want to talk about some problems in the church that made the preacher cry. Number one, division in the church. Division in the church. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about division. What does that mean? Most churches have division. This little group over here are mad, and they won't speak to that little group over there. This woman here hates that woman over there. She'd never admit it. Uh, uh, but, but she don't like them. You ever, you ever been in church where, where there's ever church I've ever been to, uh, you got little groups over here and little groups over here that don't like. Now, that's division in the church. Let me tell you what the Bible says about division. Romans 16, verse 17 and 18 said, We are to mark them which cause division among you and avoid them. What about that? What about that? The Bible said in 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10 
that uh, I beseech you, brethren, that there be no divisions among you. Y'all speak the same thing. Isn't that something? This is all stuff he saw in the Corinthian church. They had all these problems. They had all kinds of division in the church. Titus 3 and verse 9 said, We're to avoid foolish questions and strivings about the law and people fussing and arguing about stuff that don't really matter anyway. Luke chapter 11 and verse 17 said, Every kingdom divided against itself uh, cannot stand. Ephesians 4 and verse 3, uh, verse 3 said, We're to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. They had a bunch of problems in that church. Some of them were following a man. One of them said, well, I'll tell you what, oh, so-and-so, he's who I follow. Somebody else said, nope, he's wrong, oh, so-and-so's who I like. And they said, nope, you're all wrong, oh, so-and-so. And you had divisions in that church. And Paul tried to tell these people, he said, uh, I wasn't crucified for you. I didn't die for your sins. He said, we're all supposed to be following the Lord. Amen? That's right. We're all supposed to be following the Lord. You don't have preacher religion. You don't have church religion. You follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And I mean, you're supposed to follow the leadership. I got it. I believe in all of that. Uh, but it, just remember this. When you're fussing with somebody, it's not who's right. It's what's right. Most church problems come down to, well, I think I'm right, and I think I'm right. And it, it, it really don't matter what you think. Everybody's got an opinion, right? We all got opinions. I got mine, you got yours. Opinions are like armpits. Everybody has two. They both stink. Uh, what really matters is the Bible and what God said is right. It really don't matter what you think. I hear people on these talk shows on TV and they say, well, I think blah, 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 yak for about five minutes. And you know what that is? Hot air, brother. It does not mean one thing in this blessed world. What, what, what is right is more important than who is right. Husbands and wives, y'all need to remember that. It ain't who's right, it's what's right. We're going to do what's right. Well, he thinks he's out. She thinks, you know, I don't know. I hear it all the time. Uh, it's what's right. It's what's right. It's what's right. I heard about one preacher who had to leave his church because all the women in the church got on Nosebook and started gossiping about the pastor's wife. She this, she that, and she just told him, she said, I ain't going back. I've, I've had, this was down in, in another state, and she said, I'm, I've had it with this bunch of people, and it caused division in the church. You, we, he said, I'm, I cry when I think about it. I cry when I think about it. He said, you're so stingy. You're so selfish. Uh, it does not have to be your way all the time. Preacher told me the other day, this week, he said, brother, he said, I got one woman in my church he said all she does is yap and yak and yak. He said she's already caused two ladies to leave our church because she stirs up the most trouble. And I found this out. I've been, past, I've been doing this a long time. I didn't start this yesterday. And I found out in this church, and I've been to hundreds of others. I preached in one last week down here. I'm preaching in another one in Virginia this week. And I'm preaching in another one two weeks down there in Mooresville. And every church... Whenever there's problem starts, and ever there's a problem in the church, after a while, the preacher, the first thing you hear is, in your mind, so-and-so's in it somewhere. It's always two or three that's in a mess every time. There's division, there's fussing, there's fighting. There's all, you can about count on it. Three or four different ones will be in it somewhere. And don't get so quiet. It's like a turkey farmyard on Thanksgiving Day, brother, right now. Uh-oh, uh-oh, what's he going to say next? I'm going to say a lot next, so you might as well just buckle your seatbelt and hang on real tight, and we'll come out down there in a little while. We're going to come out. I ain't lost one yet doing this. So uh, physically uh, lost, uh, but uh, so spiritually. But anyway, we're supposed to not have division. We're supposed to not have division. Everything don't always go your way. Everything don't always go my way. You say, well, I don't like her. And, and you know what? I just don't like her. And I think she should do this. And I think they should do that. And I shouldn't have got picked. He shouldn't have said this. You, I tell you what you need to do. You need to pray about your attitude and get your heart right towards everybody else in here, right? Ain't that right? For the Lord's sake, for the church's sake. My daughter's sitting over yonder this morning. I've got I'm still home one with a recovering baby today, but I told them all their life, if we get stepped on, 
If somebody hurts us, and it happened all the time, if somebody hurts your feelings, you let it go for the church's sake. For the church's sake. You don't have to get back at everybody. You don't have to get even with everybody. Well, I'll tell you what, they hurt me. Bam! No, a Christian don't have to live like that. We love the Lord, and we put up with a lot of stuff for the Lord and the church. There was division in the church. But secondly, I'm going to say this. What made the preacher cry? There was disorder in the church. They was all messed up. They was, uh, they was uh, uh, people holding grudges. There was a, a question about the, the gifts of the Spirit. There was other stuff about uh, carnality in the church. There was diatrophies in there who loved to have the preeminent. They were so touchy. Now, I'm just going to unload something off my heart right quick. Keep popping in my head. I feel sorry for preachers nowadays, and especially young preachers, taking their first church and trying to pastor a church. Trying to pastor a church nowadays in this generation, it's, it's almost like you're in a cartoon. Uh, you're in a bing, bing, you know, like them little ping pong thing you knocked around everywhere. It's just one little mess. And you know the reason for that is because we have this touchy-feely generation that if every little old thing don't please me, I'll take my bat and ball and I'll just go home and I'll just, I don't like one, I don't like that. And listen, I feel sorry for young preachers having to preach to a bunch of big babies like that. Lord have mercy, people, you're 40 years old, you're 50 years old. Isn't it time to grow up a little bit? Smile, God loves you. Uh, amen. I mean, good night. I know. I know men fifty years old. I had one stand right here, sixty years old. Said, "Well, somebody called me an intimidator." Well, wow. You you will get over it. Listen, you can't go nowhere. You, that. Let me just tell you something this morning. That's why you can't keep a job. That's why they can't get at work. That's why they can't uh, keep away. You know why? Because if every little thing don't go our way in this generation, we just say, well, I quit. Well, I quit. Well, I quit. I know, I know people's quit 30 jobs in 15 years. That's why they call it work. It ain't easy. Uh, the other day, they were saying, and I turned, the, I turned the news on, and you know what they said? They said, it's 100 degrees outside. And on and Asheville, they said that, Hundred, the chill, uh, the we call it heat index. Heat index. They said if it, it's it's a hundred and three heat index, which I never understood that no way. Somebody explain that to me. Well, let me <laughs> thank you, brother. That's right. But listen, listen. Here it is in redneck. If it feels like it's a hundred and three, it's a hundred and three. I like saying the chill factor. You know, it's it's twenty eight degrees and chill factor zero. Look, if it feels zero, it is zero. Somebody help me with that. Well, technically, if it feels 103, bless God, it's 103. And they said, they said, keep all your pets in. Don't let old people go out. And I said, I can't go outside. They said, make all the old people stay in. I told Kelly, I said, they said I couldn't go outside. I said, that's the biggest bunch of bull that I've ever heard in my life. So I got Ethan. Where are you at, Ethan? Oh, he's in junior. Oh, there he is. Ethan, stand up over there. And I got Jake over here. Stand up, Jake. That boy right there. And I said, come on, boys. Put your work clothes on. We're going out to work. Sit down. And it was 103. And we got out and we got the weed eater and they had them little pinch of things. And we got out there and we cut weeds and we cut weeds. And you know, after you get good and soaking wet, it ain't really that bad. And I remember, th while I was out there, I thought, what are these people telling us? You know what these people, if school, if the air conditioning goes out of school, now they, they close the school. When I went to school, we didn't have no air conditioning. When I started preaching, they wasn't, no. I'm preaching to the biggest bunch of sissy babies, a generation the world's ever seen. Ain't no wonder you can't never get nowhere. Amen. We worked out there forever and sweated like dogs. You know what I think? I think... When it's hot, you should go out and sweat because cool air is bad for you. You say, why do you think that? Because God said that man would work by the sweat of his what? Face. It says face, not brow. That's just people stuff. By the sweat of his face. 
God wants you to sweat. God wants you to sweat. Anybody in here can't find a job? Let me help you. Raise your hand over there, Jason. Not you, this, this, the little Jason. Little Jason. You, <laughs> Bales, raise your hand. That man right there can get you a job tomorrow. Tomorrow. Amen. You don't have to take a drug test. You don't have to do nothing. Tell them. They'll, they'll put you to work. I'm, I might be sticking my... <laughs> they didn't make Dennis take one. You know what's wrong, brother? We got a sissy generation that wants to lay around all the time. Wouldn't hit a lick at a blessed snake. I said, I think, you know what I think they ought to say on the news? All old people should sweat a while. <laughs> if you have a heat stroke, don't see it, don't sue me. But 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 I really believe that. I really believe that. I believe it's good for you to sweat. I believe God, that's part of a curse we're under. We're under a curse. We're supposed to sweat. I think if you sweat, it gets poisons out of you. I think if you sweat, it lowers your blood pressure. I believe if you sweat, I mean, at least two or three, three times a week, get out there, turn, turn your air conditioning off, get out and walk around the house. If you can't walk, wiggle your toes till you start sweating. Put a jacket on. And brother, toughen up a little bit. And these Corinthians were just... Oh, I didn't like this. Oh, I got my feelings hurt. Oh, he hurt my, oh, he shouldn't have said that. Oh, I know, that's why, that's why can't, people, people won't stay in church. That's why people won't stay in church. There's honestly people who say, well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't come back on Sunday night because I'm just tired and I don't come back. You, you know why you don't? You don't want to. And you know, I can't fix that. I can't, there, I can preach from blue in the face and say, you ought to, you don't, you, you don't want to. You're supposed to love Jesus Christ enough to want to grow and be strong in the Lord. Amen? He had disorder in the church. These kids nowadays, I'm talking about from camp. I'm not talking about any of your kids. I mean, they fit it, they fit it. We went to camp, and I'm telling you, they don't, they don't go 30 minutes without something to eat. It beats anything I've ever seen in my life. When we're going to eat, 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 when we're going to eat. It's like a wrap. It's when we're going to eat, when we're going to eat, when we're going to eat. Are we going to eat? Are we going to eat? And I said, listen, you're scared to death. You might feel a tiny little hunger pain, and you'd die if you felt that little hunger pain, wouldn't you? When I was 13, I liked, I liked baseball before I started liking basketball. I don't know why I liked baseball, but I did when I was young. And uh, my daddy would take us to the Nebo school. Daddy went to work on first shift. He worked, daddy worked six days a week and seven most of the time. And he got up and take us to the Nebo school at 6.30 in the morning. 6.30 in the morning. I was 13. Some of you boys 13 years old, you don't even, you don't even know the sun comes up gradually. <laughs> you, th <laughs> you think the Lord flips a switch about 10 o'clock. And there's the sun. I'm telling you, we visit them. We go visit every Saturday. It's 11:30. We knock on their door, and they come out. And it's black in there. And I said, "What is wrong with y'all? Are you sick?" I said, "What time did you go to bed?" I said, "Four o'clock." I said, "What'd you do on it? Watch movies?" You know what that is? That's an ignorant parent's fault somewhere. Unplug that stupid thing. Put them to bed. Make, listen, if these kids would have to stay up all day long and do chores and then get up early the next day and stay up all day long, you'd throw away about three-fourths of that medicine some of them's on. Amen, Brother Danny. You say, well, he's, he's pressed and he's got stress and he's got that. He's got the devil in him for the wrong with him, uh, most of them. And I'm, I'm telling some of y'all look at me like, I can't believe you're saying this. I'm, I'm enlightening you. I'm, I'm furthering your education. You, you, you need to, it's time to grow up sometime. Might as well do it this morning. It's just when we're going to eat, when we're going to eat, when we're going to eat, when we're going to eat. Daddy took us down there to the Nebo field and let me out. And this is no lie. Come pick us up at 3.30 that evening and didn't eat a bite. Played ball all day long. And the thing about it was I didn't even think about it. it. We never thought about it. 
I used to come off the school bus and drop my books. I remember doing this. Drop my books on the ground and pick up a ball and shoot basketball till dark. And mom screamed. It wasn't like, I want something to eat. Oh, I want that honey bun. I want that little daddy cake. When's supper going to be ready? I want that Pepsi. I want some ice cream. Now we're going to eat supper. Now we're going to eat supper, mom. Now when's supper ready, mom? Mom, when is supper ready? Mom, the only thing you got healthy is your thumbs. <laughs> Say amen <laughs> right there. Amen. I'm telling you, get up! I worry about you. I worry about you. I don't know. Lord, I feel, don't you feel sorry for this next crowd that's coming up? What's this next generation going to be like? These that are that high. They got to eat six times a day. Listen, we wasn't, we wasn't poor. We didn't have a whole lot, but we wasn't poor. But mom, she'd have supper on the table. Back then... You know, you had to be at the table when it's time to eat. And you didn't say, I don't like this. You better not say that. I don't like this. You go without a day or two, you'll like it. If you didn't eat it, you didn't get nothing until the next morning. We didn't just run to the refrigerator and open up and just grab stuff. Something's, something's wrong with this generation of young people we're living in. Y'all are ruining your kids by letting them do that. Say, look, you little brat. You're getting supper, and then after that you ain't getting nothing tomorrow. You understand that? No, no 11 o'clock snacks. I'm getting in the bed in the middle of the night and coming up and eating, fixing a bowl of ice cream and cereal and watching TV two or three hours and then sleep till 11 o'clock. Get up! Get up! Get out of bed! It's what the Lord said. It's what the Lord said. Disorder. I don't have that get off on the disorder in the church. <laughs> that's, that's why I don't put my messages on the iPad. It's about the dumbest thing I ever heard of in my life. Man, take a Bible to the pulpit and put your message on the iPad. You nut, what if the Lord leads you another way? Oh, we don't worry about that no more. Number three, difficulties in the church. Difficulties in the church. Whatever happened to just being a good Christian? Whatever happened to people just said, I'm just going to live right every day. I'm not going to go backslid all week long and go to church and pray a little bit. And then I'm like, listen, whatever happened to just being, you know, we are a family here. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. And we got a diverse group here. And that's what it's supposed to be. And I love it like that. But whatever happened to just being a good Christian, a good Christian person. I, I read this and I jotted it down. I want to preach on it sometime. And it said, lessons from kindergarten. How many of you folks went to kindergarten? Raise your hand. I didn't go. We didn't have to. There's 12 years of school, like the tribes of Israel, before they kicked God out. Six, then they added another one made it 13. Number of rebellion. So we didn't have to go to kindergarten. Then to, you don't learn nothing past eighth grade anyway you ever use the rest of your life. Shouldn't have said that. But uh, it's true. It's true. I mean, I'm sorry, y'all. Don't kill me. If you was that worried about them being in Sunday school, you'd be dangerous. But anyway, in kindergarten, you learn certain things. What do you learn in kindergarten? Play fair. What do you learn in kindergarten? Don't hit other people. What do you learn in kindergarten? Clean up your mess. What do you learn in kindergarten? Don't take things that are not yours. I thought, that's what's wrong with church. We got a bunch of kindergartners running the thing. <laughs> that's what's wrong with where you work. What do you learn in kindergarten? Learn how to say I'm sorry when you're wrong. What do you learn in kindergarten? Learn when you hurt someone. You wash your hands before you eat. Hold hands and stick together when we're out in public. We stick together. We help each other. We're a family. The other day, uh, we went to camp, come home, throw her clothes down, and she took off on the bus route, stayed gone all day Saturday, come home at 8 o'clock Saturday night, Sunday night, bus kid, bus kid, work all day. I didn't even have time to unpack my clothes. And it rained while we was going to camp. My grass was high and all that. And then the baby was in the hospital. I didn't even come home. I got out of the bus out here, got 
got in that little car, that little Volkswagen, and took off to Charlotte at the hospital. Got home at 12 that night after camp. And I bust out all day Saturday, studied, preached Sunday morning, Sunday night. Had to go back, start revival. And I didn't have, I didn't even have time to unpack my clothes. They're still laying there. And uh, some of them still laying there on the floor. And I thought, you know how man they are, my grass, my grass, my grass, I've got to get that grass, got to get that grass. But I left to go early to the hospital to be with Chris. My daughter was in the hospital and I was scared to death that kid was going to be his bad collapsed lung. And I drove from there to Charlotte to the revival and back home, 12 at night, 250-mile trip that I made Monday night, Tuesday night. And Tuesday night when I come home, I was, I was going like this. Trying to stay awake. And I come around that curve going up my driveway. You might not think of it, but I look and I say, somebody's cut my grass. My grass is mowed. Maybe I'm dreaming. Lord, help me. I'm hallucinating going up through here. And, and then, sure enough, Brother Jeremy, he didn't know I was going to say this, him and Michelle heard I was having a bad time and come over and mowed my grass. Thank God for that. That meant the world to me. And, and another guy offered, Brother Mike. And I don't, that ain't happened in 10 years. I believe man ought to mow his own grass. I believe every preacher ought to get out and work and get his hands dirty and get in mud. Preachers get too big shot and ride around in a suit all the time and they forget how the rest of the world has to live. Ain't that right? Every banker. It's funny to me, a man goes to school 12 years to get him a job where he won't have to work. So he can sit in a nice air-conditioned office all week, and the first thing he has to do is go get him a membership at the Y and go lift weights and sweat to it. God, God got you, didn't he? The Lord's got you, buddy. Instead of lifting weights, come over. i got some cross ties we can put out. Does the same thing. And I won't charge you. <laughs> You're, I'm furthering your education is what I'm doing. Helping you out. Well, anyway, my grass was mowed. I thought, man, that meant the world to me, y'all. That did. Probably took a couple of hours. Miss Donna, the coal, the coal miner moonshiner. Mike told me they, back in the, early in the summer, he got an extra phone and gave her the phone. Ain't that right? And that's why she's got a phone this morning. Ain't that a blessing? Just stuff like that. Instead of being so wrapped up in yourself, self, self, look around. And say, you know what? So-and-so's had a hard time lately. I think I'll just slip him $20. I think I'll, I'll give him a gift card. or I'll. Uh, you say, do you know anybody that's having a hard time? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No, I'm not really. I'm fine. I'm fine. My grass is mowed. Praise God, and it ain't rained. And so it's, I'm good to go. But I'm telling you, a church is supposed to be like a family. Last thing I'm through. I'm through doctrine in the church they was fussing about the Lord's Supper they was fussing about law and grace and justification they was fussing about the gifts of the spirit they was fussing about listen I, I don't want to pastor a church where there's 15 different beliefs and all of them wrong and it's because preachers don't preach doctrine all scripture is given by inspiration of God at first and is profitable for what first doctrine do you know what doctrine is Doctrine is a set of belief. It's a belief system. And our doctrine defines who we are. What are. Church nowadays is come feel good. You come, we'll make you feel good. We'll get a rock band. We'll get some smoke coming up out of here. You'll feel good when you leave here. And they're nuts. They don't even know what they believe or why they believe it. Amen. Guy came to me not too long ago. He said, Brother Danny, I want to show you something. He had an anointed shower cap sent out by Reverend on TV. Honest to goodness, I saw it. Hey, Reverend so-and-so, he said, now send in your $100 and I will send you this anointed shower cap. This shower cap has been anointed especially for you, my friend. And the, I, the whole idea was that you put this shower cap on and it had an out, had a, had a outline of that, that pre pastor's hand. And he was only hands on you and heal you while you're in the shower. He said, well, you think about this. I said, there's something wrong with a preacher that wants to lay hands on you when you're in the shower. 
Can you not think of a better time? Anointed shower cap. My foot. That's what my mom always, that's a bunch of, now why do people believe stuff like that? You know why people believe stuff like that? No doctrine. No doctrine preached. You know what we believe? We believe this book is the inerrant, infallible, preserved words of God to the English-speaking people, a King James Bible. Not the NIV. Not the, you know why we don't believe that? Because the NIV, the New International Version, even the New King James Version has readings from it, come from a completely different set of Greek manuscripts that your King James Bible comes from. Now, I know, brother, a lot of churches are slipping. A lot of individuals say, well, so-and-so's a great man, and he is, uh, the Bible says great men are not always wise. Just because a great man does something don't mean it's right. Are we going to stick with the book? We'll stick with the book. Sound doctrine. The NIV says Joseph was Jesus' father in Luke 2.33. He said, well, I know I, he might be a great man. So what? Don't mean nothing. They say you'll go to Gehenna. The wicked will be turned into Gehenna. Go, uh, die and go to Gehenna. That, it's amazing to me they won't translate hell, but they'll translate heaven. They'll say, well, literally, that's Gehenna, Tartarus, Hades, and... Uh, Sheol, the great four word, Hebrew and Greek words. That man, he knows Greek and Hebrew, don't you? Yeah, them's the ones I know too. But you know what? Listen, why do they translate heaven? Why don't they use the Greek word for heaven? I'll tell you why. Because whatever spirits messing with them Bibles don't want you to believe in hell. That's got fire in it. I don't want you to believe in a virgin birth. I don't want you. At Shining Light Baptist Church, we want to have sound doctrine. We believe you're baptized after you're saved. Has absolutely nothing to do with it. We go to church on Sunday, the Lord's Day. We are not Old Testament Jews keeping a Saturday Sabbath. Talked to one yesterday, didn't we, Ethan? Yesterday. We said, you go to church anywhere? And that lady said, we're at church now. I'm Adventist. We call that seventh-day disadvantages. And they believe that they are Old Testament Jews under the law. You say, well, you shouldn't be critical of it. I'm preaching the Bible and what the Bible says about it. And uh, if it don't fit, I'm sorry. I'm telling you, the book said we are not Old Testament Jews under the law. We are New Testament Christians under grace. We go to church seven days a week if we want to. No days any different than any other. Standing on the promises, walking in his footprints, leaning on his everlasting arms, drinking from the fountain that never runs dry, pleading the blood of Jesus. Brother, living for God. We believe in the Lord coming back. We believe there's a literal millennial reign of 1,000 years on this earth by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Now, people that don't believe that, that's where all this kingdom theology comes from. This kingdom theology is, we're in the kingdom now, we're reigning, and that's why you hear those men and women on TV say, praise God, we're in the kingdom, and praise God, we're in the kingdom, and praise God, uh, we're going to walk on serpents, and praise God, you're never going to get sick, and praise God, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just, and praise God, everything great. No, everything ain't great. The devil is not bound. We are not in the millennium. He's going to be, and the Lord's going to. We believe that is sound doctrine. I'm telling you this morning, that's what caused the preacher to cry. It'll break your heart when you fast and pray and work and study and pray and then you hear some of your church members believe crazy stuff. You think, good Lord, what am I doing? Screaming my vocal cords out? Doing without food? Missing family get together Kids' birthday parties and everything else? For people, and they couldn't, don't even care enough to even come back to church on regular su- Wednesday night, Sunday night. Don't even care. Are you, uh, that's what made the preacher cry. I feel sorry for this generation of young preachers, and a lot of them's going to hear this on the internet. I feel sorry for the bunch they have to try to pastor anymore. Let's let's do better. Let's do better. Let's do better. Let's make up our mind. You know what? I'm going to toughen up a little bit. If I get my feelings hurt, I'll be back next Sunday. So what? You'll live. It's good for you once in a while. 
It's wrong to let a kid have everything it wants, anytime it wants. You're crazy if you raise a kid like it. And it's wrong for a Christian that way the same way. Sometimes you've got to toughen up. Take one for the Lord. Amen? That's right. That's what made the preacher cry. Let's stand our heads for prayer.